our health and fitness segment where we speak with experts on the topics of diet, nutrition, and the variety of other means you have at your disposal for keeping your mind and body in top shape. Today we're looking at a new report highlighting the most dangerous cuts of meat in the area or in the arena, I should say, of food poisoning. Less than a week ago, I was hospitalized for a bad case of what is assumed to be food poisoning. So I can personally tell you, if you're in good health and relatively <laughs> relatively young, uh, contact or contracting a foodborne illness can really, really knock you down. Uh, joining us on the line right now to explain this recent Risky Meats Report is Center for Science in the Public Interest Senior Food Safety Attorney Sarah Klein. Welcome to the program, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, great to uh, have you on here. I, the report crossed my news feed the other day, and uh, I thought, oh, we need to chat a little bit about this. Uh, what causes the majority of cases? Is it undercooking or cross-contamination or, or some other, some third choice? Yeah, there's a combination of issues at play here. We've got um, dangerous pathogens like salmonella and E. coli. These are usually uh, contamination events during slaughter and processing. Um, They're responsible together for about a third of all the illnesses. Mm. Then we've got another third of illnesses that are from clostridium, which is something that occurs after cooking when food is held out for too long at kind of warm ambient temperatures where the bacteria luxuriate. Right. And then the other third is from unknown pathogens. We're not sure exactly what's causing it. Um, But so we know that there are problems really far up the chain um, with slaughter and processing, and we know there are problems in the kitchen Mm. with um, holding food. So unfortunately... You know, we, we've all got a role to play in making sure that food is safe. <laughs> That's right. Well, let's start, start at the top of this uh, meat pyramid that uh, you have a graphic that you've created for any of the uh, people that are watching our video simulcast online right now at eatdrinkexplore.com. Uh, you can see this uh, pyramid. At the uh, top, you have the highest risk meats, and then at the bottom, the lowest risk. Let's start with those highest cuts. Yeah, our highest risk products, and again, these are not just the foods that are most likely to make you sick. They're the foods that are most likely to make you very sick. So the meat and poultry products that are most likely to lead to hospitalization, not just a a nasty case of diarrhea. Mm -hmm. Um, So at the very top of the pyramid, those foods that are most likely to send you to the hospital from foodborne illness would be ground beef and chicken. Okay, and it, it, the ground beef is because there's contamination on the outside that then gets worked into the meat? Yes, all types of ground meat, no matter whether it's beef, pork, poultry, they're all higher risk than intact meat products. Uh-huh. Uh, but ground beef, we've known for years it's risky. Uh, they, there have been improvements, um, but really just the way that it's made. You have one piece of contaminated meat that gets ground up with a bunch of others, Uh, and spreads that contamination throughout. And so that's why ground beef is always so very risky. So you were saying these highest risk meats will get you very, very ill. Uh, So your findings, you didn't just look at the number of outbreaks or cases, you looked at the severity as well. Exactly. Um, Each of these foods has a bunch of pathogens that are associated with it. So um, ground beef, for example, we frequently see E. coli, 0157H7, or salmonella. These are pathogens that kind of always show up in ground beef outbreaks. Each of those pathogens has what they call, a CDC calls a hospitalization rate. What percent of people who get sick from that bacteria are likely to end up in the hospital? So we unpacked all that data, added it all up, and we were able to see how severe is an illness in ground beef likely to be given that we know what pathogens are most likely to be there. I just love how uh, the uh, Center for Science and the Public Interest, anytime I see there's a report by (laughs) by you you guys, I uh, check it out immediately. For years now, you have caught the media's attention with your reports on movie theater, popcorn, Chinese food, whatever it may be. You know, you take take foods that people just – maybe don't think twice about and then show them, hey, you might want to think about this 
risk. Uh, with that in mind, why single out meats for this report? Aren't many foodborne illnesses transmitted via produce like leafy greens, uh, the likely source of my recent bout? Also, uh, dairy products? You're absolutely right. Um, we have spent the last several years with our attention focused on FDA-regulated products. So that is produce items, anything that's non-meat, including dairy uh, and, and seafood. Um, we did a report in 2009 that ranked the riskiest FDA-regulated products. Now that the Food Safety Modernization Act has passed and is kind of working its way through the regulatory process, we're turning a little bit to look at meat and poultry. We don't want to forget um, that there's kind of an even split. Half of Americans are getting sick from non-meat items, the other half from meat items. And so we need to keep toggling back and forth between these two groups of foods. Mm. The, the fact that we released a report about meat and poultry risk doesn't absolve um, the other foods that can make people sick, like leafy greens, cantaloupes, peanut butter. Um, we, you know, we'll get to them another day, as we have <laughs> in the past. <laughs> and as you mentioned, dairy. Um, you know, we are very concerned about the rise in popularity of raw milk products, that is, unpasteurized um, dairy products, and, and believe that they're extremely dangerous for consumers. So, um, luckily, we have a, enough talented people at CSPI that we're able to focus on all of these different things. Today, meat and poultry happen to be on the chopping block. All right, great, Sarah. Uh, let's move down the list now. We, you mentioned the highest risk cuts. Let's go into the high category now. Uh, I see a turkey there. What are the other cuts? Yeah, so in our high risk category, we've got turkey, steak, and then other types of beef. That's beef that may be chipped beef or stew beef or beef jerky. It wasn't described adequately in the outbreak report. Um, steak is very interesting to most consumers. When they hear that steak is risky, it's a surprise. You'd think that bacteria would be on the surface of meat and it would get seared off during cooking. Right. That's what we like about steak. You can have it kind of medium rare while you, you cook your burgers. Well done to be safe, but you've been enjoying your steak medium rare. Well, unfortunately, the, the beef industry is employing a widespread practice. It's called mechanical tenderization. They're piercing tough cuts of steak with tiny needles or blades. They're pushing any surface contamination to the inside so that you've taken a piece of steak, but you've made it just as risky as a piece of, uh, as a, as a glob of, of ground beef. Right. Unfortunately, there's no labeling of this anywhere. So consumers don't know that the steak that looks like an intact steak needs to be cooked as if it's a piece of ground beef. That's one of the things we're really pushing the industry and the agency to improve because that's a real danger to consumers. Wow, I had not thought about that. And people do it at home, too. People uh, pierce it so that the marinade will uh, get in there or whatever uh, might be the Absolutely. case. Once you pierce it, uh, it needs to be cooked all the way through. Uh, we don't have much time left. I just want to mention the low-risk category, uh, which includes sausages, uh, it looks like chicken nuggets and ham. Uh while it might be the lowest risk category, it seems like it's by far the least healthy category. Absolutely. Much to the chagrin of the nutritionists here at CSPI, we go where the, where the science takes us. Um, and separating acute illness, that's what we're looking at here, from long-term health risk, which is what nutrition is focused on, right. um, we do find, unfortunately, that these highly processed meats tend to be the lowest risk in terms of bacterial contamination. Makes sense. Not to say yeah. that people should be replacing <laughs> real food with these highly processed things, I gotta but just to say... Yep. I, I got to cut it off there, Sarah. I'm sorry, we're running out yep. of time. Sarah Klein, Senior Food Safety Attorney with Center for the Science, for Science and the Public Interest. Thanks so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure.